Texas high school regular season soccer is officially over, and it is playoff time in San Antonio, Texas. This Soy San Antonio football rundown playoff edition is being brought to you by Mia's Mexican Grill. Yes, that is right, Mia's Mexican Grill, right off Bandera and 1604. All your pregame soccer, everything you want to know, get to Mia's Mexican Grill on 1604. Trust me, they got big screens everywhere. Soccer, soccer all the time. Pre-game, post-game, soccer talk. Mia's Mexican Grill, 1604 and Bender. That's right, it's over. Regular season in high school soccer in San Antonio, Texas. It is done. Now it's time for playoffs in this edition of Soy San Antonio Football. The rundown is going to give you the nitty-gritty, the most important things, and some of these player standouts that have been amazing throughout the year from TAPS all the way up to 6A. But we're going to be focusing up with the big ones. Again, we want to thank Mia's Mexican Grill for supporting soccer 100% all in all the time here in San Antonio, Texas. Thank you for supporting San Antonio football, Soy SAF, and everything San Antonio soccer. With that being said, folks, let's get this show on the road. A lot of things that we would like to highlight, a lot of things that we want to talk about. Most importantly, Lee just finished their game. It is a Tuesday night, and Johnson and Lee went in to see who was going to be facing who in playoffs. They basically had a knockout stage, and that went down to the wire. And you know what? Surprise to me, Johnson ended up coming up uh, on top and putting down uh, Lee onto that third spot, and Johnson that second. I don't need that, guys. But we also have on the 5A division, uh, Southwest going up against Sam Houston on Friday. So much soccer to talk about. But before we get into it, I want to let you know that it's been an exciting year. We're very proud of everybody on the men's and women's coaches, fans, supporters. It's been great going out to these games, including in TAPS. We have a TAP state champion in St. John Paul II, so we are absolutely proud. Um, will we have another uh, a champion in any of the divisions? We have yet to see anybody that knows soccer in San Antonio knows that it's anybody's game. And with that being said, it's going to be game by game. We do have some very powerful teams when it comes down to our region. Obviously, with us being our city having the defending champions in San Antonio, Lee gives us a lot of pool. And no matter who comes in, either from the Rio Grande Valley or from Dallas or from Houston, they're going to know, hey, you don't mess around with San Antonio, Texas, because those teams and those players can come out and get you. With that being said, um, we want to bring in today uh, a very special guest again to get this soccer talk going on the road. Um, joining us via Skype, we have 6A Soccer. They've been crushing it on Twitter. Go follow their pages. Very informative. They're not done just because high school soccer and 6A, they're actually growing. We're going to be growing with them, so we're very excited. They're going to bring in some very, very, very uh, good information about what we need to know, what we need to highlight, some of the great moments that we had uh, over the season. And without further ado, let's bring him in here, 6A Soccer. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition on Soy San Antonio Football, the high school soccer playoff rundown. Benji, how's it going, man? I appreciate the time. Thanks for having me on your show. You know, it's a pleasure. I've been wanting to get you on here for a minute. Uh, we've uh, obviously been uh, really shorthanded with a lot of things, but we've been keeping the locomotive gas coals in running. So we are now it's better more than more better than never today in playoffs. Uh, before we get into this whole uh, playoff, just craziness of it all tell us a little bit about uh 6a soccer how it came about uh some of the passions what's your goal i mean let us know let the people know yeah man i appreciate it um you know it was, it was an idea that came up about a year ago um as as a as a high school soccer fan i found myself constantly trying to to look for different places to to find scores and and you know get recaps of, of what went on for the the day on you know, after games on Tuesdays, on Fridays, and, and it, it just became so frustrating that I said, you know, let's. What if somebody created a, a, a Twitter page, really, where parents can just go and find games, players can go and find scores, um, and that's kind of you know just how it, how it started. And so it started about a year ago, and as as I was was coming up with this idea, Lee was making their state championship run. Yeah, and I heard a great podcast with uh, Coach Boswell. Yeah, over amazing. at a, at, a, at Lee. And she started talking about just the power of, 
of social media and what it can do for these kids. And and she she showed how uh, the number of hits that that they got for Lee and for their players, Correct. you know, when they made their run. And so I kind of wanted to put the the two together. Whereas you know, okay, I can I can create a spot where players and 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 parents and coaches can can find scores from from their local games, but also a way to to highlight all these these players that we have. We have such such great talent oh, yeah. in in our area where it's like man why not why not promote so many of these players and get their names and their clips and their highlights just just out there for you know not only you know for co- college coaches to possibly see but just for for their friends for their families for their club teammates to see you know what their buddy did the, the night before and and um, you know so it was just a way to like man let's, let's promote this talent that we have out here in, in San Antonio and um, and come up with with one spot where where people can can post their clips and and feel proud about themselves and what they did and and proud for their school and and so that's kind of what what it took off with this uh, with this year and you know I decided to 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 give it a go at the start of the season and just saw it start to to take off and from there it's it's growing and so you know I've got big plans for you know for for this off season for next year. Um, and you know, I hear what what, what fans are, are kind of looking for, so I decided to to kind of take it into the, the the club realm next. You know, why why have these players after you know putting in such hard work for four months and getting excited and and getting onto social media and start promoting themselves um, and their and you know who they are and what they're about and, and their skills? Why have it stopped after four months? The majority of these players all play for clubs you know clubs in. in uh, um, in and around the town, and so it's like, let's get these kids to stay with this and continue to to, to get their clips out there, especially for club. You know, because college coaches are funny. Some you know like high, you like to focus on on what kids do in high school. Other other college coaches like to focus on what kids do in club. So if these kids can can continue to to post their clips for uh, for what they do in club games, let's get it out there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it through the summer and and this spring. And roll with the with club scores and club updates, and you know see if these see if uh, parents and and kids still still enjoy it and want to get their clips out there, and, and we'll go with it. And then uh, you know come next high school season, you know I really you know I I got into five A uh, with with posting you know their score updates and, and things like that, but you know I didn't really dig into the five A side and, yeah, and correct you know really trying mm-hmm. to get their you know get their uh their weekly stats posted and, and things like that and you know i wanted i want there's such great 5a schools oh yeah i mean that, you have 5a is and i had to interrupt you but you're, you're, you're correct there's such great 5a scores and there's a schools and, and there's a cinderella story that i personally have loved all season long with sam houston i think oh, we they're, both, they're amazing this we, year. we both talked about it earlier in the season i know we met up before and I said, man, that school was sick. I'm telling you, I need to do something with Sam Houston. And they crushed it. And they're in the playoffs for the first time in the history of their what program. A, what a great story. It's an amazing story. You can check it out on soysaf.com. Um, you can read and see what, uh, what, 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 what they've done all year long. It's just a, a, one of those stories that you never think about it. There's another team that, that sticks out to me um, here in the local San Antonio area with Fox Tech as well going yep. nobody really knows about them but they're around the Judson Universal City area yep. and Fox Tech making playoffs as well yep. and that's another team that I need to shout out also in the 4A 5A division but you're correct there's some amazing teams besides Southwest and yeah. and in the uh, and, and you know Alamo Heights Alamo and, Heights and, and all those great powers, teams yep. Yep. yeah but there's some teams that are just uh, to know to not to take anything away from Southwest and Alamo Heights which are the two big powerhouses but the level of play has um uh, has really truly increased. I mean, there's even Burbank in there in 5A yeah. that's sneaking in. So yeah, you know, I, I'm near, excited to see what you're going to bring yeah. in. Yeah, Brackenridge. You know, that, that's, there's so many just just great 5A schools, and so I want to I want to start to do those schools and those players and coaches the, the service that they that they deserve. Um, and so so next year I'll definitely be getting uh, more into 5A um, and getting them you know more excited about you know what it is that that. You know that I could, you know, kind of do for them, and then also uh, the girls. Yeah. Oh, well, you know yeah. what? That's something that's much needed. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I, we do as much as we can when it comes down to girls' soccer and men's soccer. Uh, we do not. We. You already know my opinion. You know me. I've told you many, many times. There is a, um, in my opinion, women's soccer or girls' soccer in this city is probably. And I'm probably getting a little flag for it. 
but it's a lot more intense than watching the boys, oh, yeah. man. I'm Definitely. You, I, I love these going, girls that I've seen have really, really gone out there. I'm like, oh my goodness. We've got this is some crazy. absolute girl women ballers oh, yeah. in this yeah. in this town and some amazing teams. And, you know, I just at first I wasn't sure if I, you know, would have the have the time and the effort to to legitimately put in for you know for the the girl side and give them the also the service that that they deserve, and so uh, you know seeing as how you know everything's kind of unfolded and and I there is so much passion behind girls soccer in San Antonio that it's incredible. I get messages all the time saying, hey, when are you going to start you know you know getting our getting our uh, scores out there and, and our clips and highlights out there, and so it's it's time. And now that I know you know I've got the flow of the season, I've got this first season. You know, under my belt with the, um, you know, with the, with the 6A side, where it's like, you know what, let's let's get the girls out there and let's get their scores and highlights and everything posted and, and show, you know, what what San Antonio girls soccer is, is all about. Well, you know, we're going to be 100% every step of the way, and folks, if you are not following 6A soccer on Twitter, go ahead and do it because they're just going to keep growing, and we're going to keep growing with them. We're going to be trying to incorporate more um, women's sports and uh, more coverage. As uh, the summer comes around, trust me, we're not waiting until next season. We are going to be ready to roll for actually winter soccer when it comes down to taps. Um, there's a lot of winter soccer uh, in San Antonio, believe it or not, between August to December. And then we have, um, I'm, I'm sorry, fall soccer. And then we have winter soccer where we have the big schools like Antonian and the current women's reigning champion in Division Three, John Paul II at a shirts making us proud. So, yes, and stay tuned. We're going to be great. It's awesome. They're doing they're doing amazing things, and not only that, but let's uh, not forget about some of the also um, uh, the other the, the reigning five A champion in Bernie. You yep. know, I yep. mean, how incredible is it that we have two state champions? Um, well, last year we had four state champions with San Antonio Episcopal. I'm sorry, uh, winning their three peat, and then. Uh, you know, uh, San Antonio League winning it, and then in five we had Bernie. It's incredible what, what the the quality of soccer is. So you definitely are going to have your hands full as it evolves. So yeah. and then the the run that Central Catholic that Central made for four years, and, and then four look, years you know, in a row. look at what Antonian did this year. You know, Antonian came out of you know really out of nowhere. I mean, I, a lot of people expected them to have a really good season this year. Um, they kind of struggled in the middle of, of district play. Um, but, they were, but they were always the team that you had your eye on, and they made that playoff run. Um, under you know, unfortunately got knocked out when they made the uh, state final four. But they had a great run. Amazing! It's to an the amazing final run. four. And let's talk, let's uh, now, now that we're talking about greatness, I don't think there's a conference anywhere in Texas that has a number one, a number two nationally and state ranked with um, uh, on the girls side. And I'm talking about Reagan's girls and. Um, um, uh, Clark and Clark. Yeah. I mean, two nationally ranked soccer teams, and respectfully, one and two in twenty eight six eight. That's incredible to me. That's just the level of talent. And if y'all, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if you follow. Look what Smith and Valley's doing for the girls' side. In, exactly. In then, yeah. And then the girls on last year, they, they should have gone all the way. You know, they had Helene Ferris. Everybody's like, oh, they're going to fall off because Helene's over now at a UTSA. Well, wrong. They crushed it you know they ended up going undefeated in district play and they're one of the favorites men's and women's yeah they're 20 what 21 up 21 1 and 0 21 1 and 0 on the season and exactly. undefeated in district place i mean smithson valley's gonna those girls are they're they're doing great things over there coach atkins over there he's a great coach they've they've got a really good program well we love what you're doing we have a lot of work Appreciate to do it. but right now let's talk Let's do this roundup. We're not going to get into the nitty gritty. We don't really care about the power rankings, who's who. We don't predict who's going to win because I'll be honest. I'm a purist of the game. I go to watch. I, I I've learned to. I don't know how you feel over at six A, but I've learned that if I go to a game thinking that this team's got numbers and a player, I, I just look at it as like my my March Madness bracket. Oh well, yeah, yeah, I, I, I had to tear Kentucky that. out number one exactly. My, you know. <laughs> My my son unfortunately picked a picked Kentucky to go to the championship game, so oh, he was heartbroken one no. one day in. So for me to go and, and start making making picks all the way through, I, I wouldn't do any of these teams of you know service. And so uh, you know, it, it, there's there's great teams. There's there's been great great play this year throughout district play, um, and so you know it's 
let's just talk about the you know talk about these teams locally that that made the playoffs. That let's talk about some of their players because I know as once I get into to picking games, there's gonna be upsets and I'm end up screwing up my entire bracket just like my NCAA bracket. So no, oh, there you go. Well, I'll, I'll leave the picking up to you if that's, if that's no. What you, I, do. <laughs> you know, so I'll be honest with you, Lee. We've been following Lee. Uh, they they should have been three time uh, state champions I mean, easily they, easily they lost we were there when they lost the state final and then we were in there PKs, what a game that was that was insane that was insane if it wasn't for that young man going down uh, injuring himself um, during that match I think we would have won that one but we're not going to cry over so I'm, but I'm going to tell you right now uh, Lee was never even expected to get to that to that level to be honest with you they yeah. were supposed to lose. Every one of those state title games, they weren't even supposed to make a title run. That's why I don't care if if Lee's going in as a three seed or Reagan will going in as a one. Because last year I saw a New Braunfels beat a Reagan, and then oh, yeah. and PKs. then in PKs, and then I saw some other stuff like Valley View beating uh, Southwest after going on a thirty four game run streak. Hollandale losing out in play. I'm like, yo, what? That's when I was like, you know what? This is a pure. Beauty Harlow went on a great run last year too. They did. They and went after, an amazing. After, after they got beat by uh, they got beat by Reagan right at the end of the season. Yes, sir. They, they, right they went on went on a run. And and then that's why I do not like to pick these things. But what is it's the purpose fun, of the show? It's, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's get to it. Let's run this down. Let's um talk about the six A. We're gonna get into folks. We're gonna get into the. We're going to get into only the 6A in uh, men's and women's. We're going to talk a little bit about the women's on the women's side. Um, is there a clear champion is the question of the night. Do we have a state champion in 5A, 6A, 4A, any type of A coming to San Antonio? And now that San Antonio Lee has won the state championship and has proved themselves going, being nationally ranked, going into the state finals one year, uh, being nationally ranked number one in the country during the COVID year, and then coming back, Winning the state championship, will we have a public um, a UIL state champion come from San Antonio? We will see. Let's Man, get to it. That's a great question. I don't know. If, I don't know if we will, but boy, do we have some contenders. That, we got that some all... major contenders. We really do. So let's get into it. One of the biggest things that stuck out to me in the beginning of the season. Yes, we can sit down here and talk about uh, the uh, the top four. It's always the top four. Everybody knows you need four spots to get into. Today, uh, there was a t- uh, go uh, head-to-head. Instead of a coin toss, they decided to play the game. Lee and uh, Johnson went head-to-head uh, on the pitch, 90 minutes. Johnson came up on top, leaving Lee into the third seed, Johnson to the second. Basically, who plays who? Yep. So let's talk a little bit about that conference. The whole season, it's been incredibly, incredibly tight. I mean, I'm even talking about any given Sunday, you'd lose to a Roosevelt. Any given Sunday, yeah. you're going to go down. Down to a Brandeis. Now Brandeis is in the fourth spot of the twenty eight six eight. We're gonna go with the big boys. Brandeis had a Brandeis had a great year. They're they're a really young. And they're team. young. They're young. They're a lot of sophomores, some juniors, but they're they're a really young team. And you know they came on strong towards towards the end of the season. They struggled a little bit um, during the preseason, but I think that's what kind of hardened them up and made them learn about you know what they're good at and um, how they can how they can go forward. And they had a great run. They they finished the. District played nine, two, and five. Knocked off, uh, knocked off Lee. Um, ended up tying, drawing uh, Reagan twice. Nice. Um, they and they had a, a great run to, to finish fourth in in the district. I'll be honest with you, no hit against. And please, Brandeis, if you're listening to this, which I know you are, I did not even have you in the four. But you, Ooh, I, I did not. I did. I because of the youth, because of the youth, and the way it started off, and that's what's so crazy about this six, eight, twenty, twenty. Um, um, uh, about this about this conference here is just that it's so these kids just how in the world like and I never underestimate them but with the level of quality of play I you know there was moments that I said eee man Brandeis might be that one team that might not get it I thought I had Churchill I thought Churchill had a much a much um cohesive team a much a lot more talent a lot more seniors a lot more seasoned a, a, a lot of se- a lot more seasoned players and boy, they, Brandeis surprised me. They that did. Was amazing. Church, Loved Churchill, it. Churchill was tough. You know, they, they were kind of tough to grade. They had a freshman coming in um, at, as goalie. They had two great seniors, though. Amazing. Um, they had a, a, a tough defense. Um, you know, but they just they struggled a little bit. I I definitely see, think uh, Churchill's going to be back. Um, you know, but, but going back to Brandeis though, and, and this is one of the reasons why I want to transition from you know 
doing high school to also into the club because a lot of those Brandeis players, they all, you know, and much like, you know, most of the players around this city, but they all play high level club. Correct. They've yes. got a lot of ECNL players. Um, and, you know, people can, can say what they want about, you know, ECNL and, and different, different clubs and, and leagues, but the style of play that, that those kids play against week in, week out is, is tough, but it prepares you for things like high school and stuff like that. Correct. Um, and so, you know, for me, that was, that was one of the things where it's like, you know, I'm going to keep an eye on this team. Uh, and, and sure enough, you know, they, they had a great season. You know, their, their playoff match, finishing fourth, their playoff match is going to be against Smithson Valley. And, you know, yeah. Smithson Valley tied, uh, um, Ty Clemens, you know, for district, ended up winning their district because of the head-to-head. Um, Smithson Valley's big loss, you know, came, you know, in the first week of the season to Reagan. And then after that, they went on like a 16-game a run. Um, but, you know, I think Brandeis, that first round matchup with Brandeis and, uh, and Smithson Valley is going to be the game to watch. That's going to be the game of the week. Not only that, but I, I mean... They, Rich, I think, is the, I think that's going to be the best game in Region 4. Um, yes. For a, for a 4-1 seed, that's, that is the game to, to watch, to go to, you know, have your, have your buddies sending you text updates because that's going to be the, the best game of... Uh, uh, of the seat or of the the first round, I, I think in my in my opinion. And I, I, I man, I hate seeing both of these teams go head to head first round, but it is it's a one versus a four, and that's that's how I love seeing I love seeing them go head to head in the first yeah, round. That's yeah, what you want to see. see. You know, well, you want to see these matchups. Smith and Valley. Let's talk a little bit about those guys. Everybody always wants to talk about Reagan, and they want to talk about um, and not, not much is being said about Smith and Valley. But look, I've known uh, their number one player there since he was probably thirteen. He was a former SAFC Academy kid. Um, and I love it. I mean, I love it when these kids leave. That's the purpose of the academy, I believe, is to always pr- give something, an option to the to their player to development at a high level that they can compete in Texas UIL, grab major soccer scholarships to universities, and make sure that they have a future. And you know what? Diddley, Brad Diddley, has yep. been a prime example among so many other players that we can talk about the academy, but comes out one season – uh, plays for Smithson Valley, crushes it, sets a record, 50-some goals. Kids, 41, 41, 41 goals. goals. And well, I'm going to say 50 because the kids got to score a little bit more, in my opinion. But um, <laughs> Felt like 50. It felt like 50. Takes them undefeated. I mean, makes them state-ranked. Um, and there's more that goes into Smithson Valley. They're, they're, it's a team that's been developing over the years. I remember meeting them three years ago. They got excited that we went to a Canyon Cougars versus Smithson Valley game. Varsity, we were there taking photos. And they were just happy that we were there. And I remember, I said, boys, just keep crushing it. Now those kids from three years ago are seniors, and they're doing amazing things when it comes down to their game. So, you know, you hit on, you hit on a great point, though. SAFC Academy. You know, a lot of those players, well, all those players in the academy, when they're, when they're there, they can't play high school soccer. So a lot of, Correct. you know, a lot of just local... High school fans don't end up learning who these true players, you know, who these players are. Exactly. The the Devin Vegas. Imagine Oof. if Devin Vega played high school soccer. That would the have been rec- insane. The records he would have broken around this city. Oh, insane! So uh, to see these players, you know, be able to come out their senior year and play. Brad Dildy, um, Rafa, Rafa over at uh, at Brandeis. At Brandeis, yeah. Um, the young no, no, I'm sorry, not at Brandeis. Rafa's at at Johnson. At Johnson, you correct. Ray, I'm sorry. You have Ray at Brandeis. Um, Jason Suko over, Suko at Reagan. over at Reagan. Yeah, you know, to see those kids be able to come and play their senior year and what they could do, and it shows it's a testament to the academy, correct? Because of of what of how they built those players up, um, and then to see them play their high school, you know, senior year and be able to represent their school, and you know, who knows, you know, go for a run for a state title or you know, win district um, for that one year. It, it's been great, but you could see just when you go and you watch those teams play and you watch those players. The, the talent and skills that they have, you know, it's great to see that, and you know, I look forward to that, you know, happening for the next, uh, you know, next couple of years with with uh, these academy players. But you know, going back to, the, you know, let's, let's go back to, to District Twenty Eight, right? Go ahead, go ahead. You know, first we, we've got to talk about the the players, right? So so um, Golden Boot, Correct. Golden Boot for District Twenty Eight went to Jake Salas. Yeah, oh yeah, Jake sophomore, Salas. a sophomore. A sophomore you know what? winning when, the golden boot. When, it, when you see Jake Salas play, you'll think he's undersized. He's a, he's, he's a little tiny kid, but he's grown a lot. But I'm going to tell you what, he can move. Lightning. He's, he's He is lightning in a ball. bottle. He probably has the, the quickest first step I've seen 
of any player in a, in a long time. Correct. Um, for for a nine, the way he moves, his his smarts, you know, he's you could see that he, you could see that his sister taught him a lot. Yeah. You know, Mia. Oh yeah, Mia Salas. Yeah, correct. Over at she, uh, Houston now. Yeah. So she, you could see that that she taught him a lot. He's got a lot of uh, her game in her, but he his speed up top is is amazing. And what he did with with Brandeis, you know, he finished the season with 19 goals. Correct. Um, like I said, won the won the Golden Boot for uh, for District 28. Um, and right behind him. You know, you had a uh, uh, clever with uh, with eighteen goals, yeah, or seventeen Rosa goals. Goal. Yeah, Pato Torino, the Pato, uh, Pato Tenorio. I mean, the, the, had a, a Reagan with with eighteen goals, uh, clever with with seventeen. Um, you know, they all had had monster seasons. You know, it's unfortunate for you know for clever with Roosevelt that that Roosevelt wasn't able to to yeah, make playoffs because yeah. they've got some great players. Um, you know, clever was, was fun to watch. Uh, uh, Luis Vasquez, oh, yeah, the Luis keeper. Vasquez is a goalie. Oh, no, I think in my opinion, like and I've said again, Luis Vasquez is one of the best goalkeepers I've seen in San Antonio at that high school level. It, it breaks my heart to see him as a senior, and hopefully, I'll get to see him play at college. I don't know where he's committed to yet, but yeah, and, and that's, you know, that's what's been fun about what what I get to do. You know, with, with seeing all these kids' clips that I get tagged in every week, I'm getting tagged. Correct. In yeah. another, you know, in a, in another clip from uh, from Luis, just making a great save. Whether it's Luis sending it, you know, sending it to me or tagging me in it, or his Rosa coach, yeah, or an opposing, job. an opposing player, you know, tagging me in a Correct, Luis save. Yeah. But I, you know, I think he's been part of my my uh, save of the week for the last four weeks. He just won it again this week, you know. And so to see these kids' excitement when uh, when I do a goal of the week and you know saves of the week, it's it's awesome. You know, having having them tag me in it, saying, "What do you think about this?" When I'm like, dude, that was that was fire. That was dope. You know, keep on sending me that. Let's get these uh, yeah, posted out there, and, let, and let you know. Let the fans and and the parents and and everybody vote on it, and, and you know it's it's just good for everybody. Whether whether a kid wins it or loses, it, that doesn't matter. It's just yeah. get these clips out there, let everybody see it, and have a good time with it. But yeah. but Luis Luis had a great season and made some some monstrous saves. So that I mean, and you're right. You know, when it comes out of division, the Golden Boot comes goes definitely going to go to. To little Salas and then Clebet and you know keeper I think Pato, keeper. but you know we can't you know Pato ended up winning um, one of the things for me I, you know it's for me it's not just about saves or not yeah. it's not just about goals it's, it's about, about goals it's about the assists assist. so you know the, the the true you know players and so uh, um, Pato Tenorio with Reagan ended Correct. up winning you know the highest points yeah um, for uh, for goals and, uh, and assists and so uh, you know Pato had a, had a great season we'll see what he does it at a uh, with Reagan and uh, you know for their their playoff. Uh, run and um, but then you know we got the the, the Golden Glove um, Shama TV Shama TV newcomer man. to uh, to Reagan a newcomer to uh, another SAFC Academy kid former yeah to an, and a, and a newcomer just to, to high school soccer in yeah, twenty eight and yeah. district twenty eight first year he's a, he's a junior uh, but man he had he had some great some great saves he only gave up eight goals for the entire season played uh, um, I believe the entire season with with Reagan you know every every game. Correct. Uh, but only giving up, I think, eight goals um, for uh, for the entire season. I think he only gave up six goals in district, gotcha. or maybe it was eight goals in district. But just unbelievable nice. um, to have that many That's saves. And stuff. you know, he makes he makes a lot of things look easy. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, know, the kid is what six foot one two six like nine. That. He's six, like six nine. He's a tall <laughs> kid, and like, and he's and he moves really fast. I mean, he's, he's such a great kid. I've never seen somebody that tall. With that quick of feet and be able yeah. to get get that low that quickly. Yeah, very much. But yeah. he makes from from what I've seen in the games I, I've I went to with Reagan, um, he made he made teams adjust how they took free kicks. Gotcha. And set pieces. Yeah. He gotcha. made them try to try to go low. He makes he just makes things look easy. And so so Shama TV with the the Golden Glove out of District Twenty Eight, he just had a, a great great season. And then you know so. So just looking at, at, at the, the rundown, you know, Reagan finally, you know, after four years of, um, you know, not winning district. And, you know, Reagan, Reagan has traditionally been a power of, of District 28. Yeah. Once they yeah. championship, you know, they, but they struggled, you know, these last couple of years. So for them to finally go and get their district, get their district championship going 13-0-3 undefeated, it's huge. I mean, you look at, look at 28 and... Um, every game, like you said earlier, is is a grind. Anybody could could win. When you got Churchill finishing fifth and, and Roosevelt finishing sixth, yeah, and and you know even Madison, it's it is a, a grind in that district. 
And so, you know, Reagan had a, had a great season, followed now by, by Johnson coming in second place, Lee uh, dropping to third, and, and Brandeis in fourth. Correct. You know, when, when, you, look at, when you look at Reagan, you know, like we already, talk, we already spoke about, uh, about Pato. Yeah. And we spoke about Sean. Having a, a, good, a good, strong goal, it's, it's, it could do Reagan uh, some big favors going into the playoffs. You know, it's, playoffs are all about goalies. Yeah, exactly. I mean, one of the biggest examples, you know, over the years has been Bertoni. Everybody got so used to Joey. Oh, Joey. Uh, I'll be honest with you, if it wasn't for Joey making, even including, a lot of people got mad at him, but when he got that red card. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, against um, uh, um, Travis, was it? Yep. Uh, Lake Travis, that was the best thing I've ever seen. He sacrificed a whole game to motivate his team, and his team came back and ended up going to the – I mean, that's – you're right. A, a keeper will keep you in the game, and we've seen this at every level I mean, how many, of play. How many playoff games ended up coming down to PKs? Every, you know, so if, you every have, one of them. Every one of them. The majority of them were all PKs or literally last-second goals. Bertoni came out huge uh, last year in the final. He was uh, a beast. He, he just he, Nothing was coming past the kid, and they were coming at him, coming yeah. at him, and they knew it. But, yes, uh, Mativi is going to be a factor. That's why. Yeah. Now, 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 we've highlighted these players, and, and I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I think – I think Reagan is going to be getting over the hump big time over New Braunfels. Now I'm going to that's, talk that's, about that's a, that's going to be a game though. I mean, you know, that's Reagan, going to be a big game. The, the, but they, I think the motivation Reagan, of of Luth getting knocked off by exactly. uh, New Braunfels last year. You know, we'll but see New how, Braunfels how that is plays no out. joke either. New Braunfels is no joke. I mean, they're going to be. I've seen both of them play um, physically. Reagan's going to be if New Braunfels can keep up with Reagan physically, it'll be a match. And, you, and the Broncos is a very strong, very strong physical team. team. Very strong physical team. They're, so Reagan's going to get knocked, fun to knocked watch. around a lot. But I personally think now I'm gonna, we're going to get into who I think moves on. We're just talking about who's moving on, folks. We're not doing the whole doggone bracket. Who moves on? Who stays home? Who had an amazing season? They all had an amazing season. Not everybody gets to go to the Texas high school playoffs. But I think Reagan moves on. I'm going to tell you this right now. I think Brandeis knocks out Smithson Valley. Oh. That's you know that's scary. I but think, I, we'll, think, I think we, we'll get to that. Yeah, I, 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 that's that. Is, like like we said earlier, that is that is the game, the best game to watch. And then we have a re- so it's funny because here's the thing though is, is, is I guess I'm getting too excited about it because you these are. are these are these are um these are reruns from a year ago because Reagan played New Braunfels last year, folks. Who New Braunfels surprisingly knocked him out in in, in, uh, in uh, penalty kicks, and then uh, Lee. And Clemens went head to head, and Lee obviously went on the win. I but I don't think, but Lee didn't. I mean, Clemens does not forget that. No, at all. No, no, oh no, not at all. And then this year's matchup newbie that I have is you know Smithson Valley and uh, and Brandeis. That's something I did not see uh, uh, moving forward. But I mean, all right, let's 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 move forward with this. Oh, where you where are we at? So let's get you know we'll, we'll keep on going with, with you know with some of these teams and, and just highlight some of these players from from each one of these teams and you know let, let's give because what what my what my thing is all about is promoting these players and talking about these players. Um, and so, you know, for going back to Reagan, you know, we look at the, at their team. They had a strong defense. I think they only gave up, oh, man, I don't, I don't, they gave up like 10 goals, I think, eight goals on, on the season. Um, their defense is strong. They, Reagan has a really good midfield. You know, it's, it's led by Jason Suko. Jason ended up with uh, 14 assists, seven goals. Uh, but you also have Aiden Phelan, a junior, and Jack Hilliard, a junior. Yeah. Um, Aiden had nine goals and, and two assists, and Jack had seven goals and, and six assists. You know, Reagan's really strong through the midfield with Pato up, up top, um, with some with strong winger play and, and a strong defense. So they're, they're going to be good. And then you, know, you look at Johnson. Oh, Johnson man, Johnson stout. Johnson's, Johnson is stout. Man. Yeah, Johnson's dangerous good. team. That's a dark horse. Yeah, that is they, a dark horse of that conference. They, they went on a run right now. They're looking good. You know they're led by uh, Diego Robles. Diego was Diego. Was, Diego was the one that had the, Diego, had the goal tonight. They call him Diego. He had he had the goal tonight against Lee. Uh, so he he finishes up with twelve goals, three uh three assists on the season. Um, and then Rafa, who's committed to Tulsa, yeah, uh, their their, SA, their SAFC player, eight goals, seven assists. Um, and then Patrick Gale, their their senior uh, their senior goalie. I'm I'm gonna tell you right now, Patrick Gale, man, that kid it can he is another presence between the bars. I'm telling you, that kid. Whew. Yeah. And they've got, they've got some play they've got love their uh I mean he uh, stopped almost every defense. He stopped every every assault that's come his way, he stopped it. Now, I don't know how he's 
he he's impressive to watch. I like him watching that kid. Yeah, you know, Jared Stonger, um, uh, left back, left back. He's left back or right back. He's a right back. Um, with the uh, with Johnson, he's he's a beast. Gets up the field, play, puts great balls in the box for them. Um, Jaden Frankie, they've got some some great players Correct. over at uh, over at Johnson, and all those kids other than Rafa, they're all sophomores and juniors. Jeez. That's that's incredible. See, that's what makes this conference so difficult. A lot of conferences, they're losing a lot of seniors. When it comes down to this one specifically, there's not a very big senior class to, that I can that I can think of. The majority of these kids that are coming in, they're all juniors and sophomores crushing the game. So yeah. Now, unfortunately, though, in talking about the seniors, and we're and, and it's funny because you know we talk, we're now about to talk about Lee since Lee finished in third. Lee is Lee is senior heavy. Yes. They they do have some 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 strong juniors that that played big roles, you know, especially last year. Chuck, uh, uh, Juan Alves. Oh yeah, Juan. Um, you know, he Julian. He had, he had a he had a great year last year when when they went on their run. He's a junior this year, but you know, you look at, at Tate Martinez, junior. Yeah. He led their team in goals with thirteen goals, seven assists. But Julian. Um, 13 goals, 18 assists, just a monster. If they can get the production out of him, you know they they can they can they can surprise a uh, surprise Clemens. Um, well, that's what I, I mean. You know, Clemens is not a is not an easy team but to beat. But I mean, let's be honest with you. I mean, Lee right now is not. Uh, they're on the. They're they're they're, they're, strugg- they're struggling. You know, they're struggling. Hopefully, they find themselves in the next couple of days. Their games on Friday. Um, and you know, hopefully, hopefully, you know, they find themselves and, and give Clemens a, a great game. Because yeah. for me, you know, two of my favorite players in this city, Davis, you know, Davis Kelly. You just did your did your piece on he Davis. Did Davis is, is an absolute beast. When, me, when, when you talk about high school soccer, like it, you don't get any better than a senior like Davis. No, you, you know, don't. You, 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 don't, you watch you don't. the things that that he does on on the field. He's all heart. You you talk to him. He's all class. You know, just a stand-up kid. You know, he goes, spends his time um, refing games. You know, he's 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 all about the community. He's going to do great things in college. Yeah, he's going off to North Carolina, man. Yeah, he's going to crush it. I I hope he makes a. I hope they get to make a, a run. Just you know, for him and then for Geo. You know, Gio. Gio as a left back for years is just like the kid is phenomenal. Yeah, the balls that the, that he could put in the box. Yeah, he put a, a beautiful one timer. On a oh who was it against? It was against Reagan um, oh, in their wow. first matchup when uh, when they drew one one. It was a one timer from correct deep yeah, on yeah, the left yeah, side did, yeah and and yes, hit it, it to a to Tate that was back back. In, that was back uh, early late late early February late January yeah I think. and that's that's all you know Geo Geo's a, a phenomenal player I can't wait to see where uh, where he ends up in in college but you know he finished. Finished the season as as a, a left back with, with five goals, ten assists. I mean, that that's like the the uh, what's his name over at um, at Liverpool. Um, oh, they're left back. Why can't I think of his? Why can't I think of his name? <laughs> oh well, we're just gonna leave it at that. The left back at Liverpool. He's a phenomenal player. He can splice them all up. Anyways, um, you know, but but just you know, can put great balls in the box. Gets up and down the field. Defends like a, a beast, you know. Gio's just Gio's a, phen- a phenomenal player, so I'm really really looking forward to seeing what they do. And then and then what can you say? You know, we've already we've already hit on Brandeis with uh, Jake Salas, um, Ray, um, not Ray Aguiar. Um, you know, they they've got a senior goalie. They probably had to me. They probably have three of the best forwards that I've seen. Four, four of the best forwards that I've seen in this city with with the. Uh, Jake Salas, yeah, um, Ray, agreed. Um, uh, Danny, and then um, and then Noah. You know, Noah's another. Uh, oh S- yes, an yeah, SAFC, good call. Uh, yeah, absolutely, good SAFC, call. You know, boy, and so you know, they they've got a great team. I I keep forgetting he he, he he's now over at uh, Brandeis now. So. Yeah, and that, so and you know what, all these kids are just finally getting into the rhythm of of what it is because it's, it's it's hard for them. To, you know, it's hard for any kid and to go from a club environment straight into. Texas High School UIL because it's it's a whole different ball game. So with that being said, that six at conference, I mean these players, each one of them in their own right, have absolutely crushed it, and nobody could be any more proud than each and every one of these schools being represented in the playoffs. So now, with that being said, now that we highlighted these players out of this conference, 
I hate saying it, but I think Smithson Valley stays behind the Brandeis just because of the momentum. I think Lee pulls off another win against Clemens. Wow. Yeah, I do. I do believe it. I do believe that they um that they might capitalize on that. Uh, I just I just got a feeling on that one. I hope I'm, I, I hope that both teams go so it's amazing watching these teams. Um but I do believe Reagan finally gets over the hump, beats um New Braunfels in regulation instead of penalties. And um I'm missing one more. Um well, we have uh, Johnson and Steel. And Johnson and Steel. Johnson's going to move on to that one. So, with that being said, man, that's good. that's huge. I think we spent about 30, 30 minutes just talking about just one conference. That's how big and how much talent there is from each and every one of these teams that are being represented that are representing San Antonio moving into the Texas high school playoffs. You want to just jump into twenty seven then? Let's do the twenty seven. Right. Let's do this. So at twenty seven, you know, we had the we already talked about Brad Dildy as, as correct. The gold, Smith the um, so you had Smithson Valley coming up. You know they went twenty-two and one, twelve-one and one on on district play, tied with the Clemens for uh, uh, for district play at twelve-one and one. Uh, Smithson Valley had the head to head over them, so of course they ended up being district champs. You then got Steele and New Braunfels. You know they this conference, this district is is a tough district. Um, you know, with with Smithson Valley, you, you've got Brad, you've got Danny, um, another senior who had who, who chipped in sixteen goals, thirteen assists. Alex Franz with with seven goals, thirteen assists. Um, Jax, you know, Jax, oh, yeah. whose dad is the the girls the girls coach. Yeah. Um, but he had four goals, thirteen assists. And they have they have a strong team with with a lot of really good players. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun to, to see how they do. Um, you have Matt Cavatillo in, in the midfield, um, and and they're, they're senior goalie too. Cole Hansen, who he, Cole, Cole he's Hansen, committed to. Um, oh, where's he going? Uh-huh. He's no, 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 no. Uh, local, uh, local school. But anyways, you know, he, he's he's committed to a um, to play in, in college too. So he's 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 had a great strong season. Um, I think other than the Reagan game, after that, you know, he turned things around and, and has just had a great season. So it's going to be interesting to see how how Smithson Valley does in the in the playoffs. But just looking at what they did for the district. They had a great district season, um, and just highlighted by a lot of a lot of really good play from from some great players. Agreed. I mean, uh, that that conference itself is so dangerous with the because within that conference you have Smithson Valley, you have Steel, you have Canyon High. Um, I'm sorry, Canyon, Smith, no, Canyon, no, not Canyon. Um, New Braunfels. I'm sorry, Steel, New Braunfels, and and Clements, and it's so intense. I mean, those those teams. It's just as it's crazy. It's just as crazy as the twenty-eight. So yeah, uh, when it comes down to that, so where do you want to move? Where, well, progress? I mean, let, I mean, we got to make it fair. You know, Clemens. Clemens was led by Kaysen Dilworth. Um, he was there. He was there talking their top goal scorer with, with twelve goals, correct. three assists. Um, Christian Govia. Christian Govia, yeah, correct. Nine yeah. goals and twelve assists. You know, so they've got a lot of a lot of good play. Max Walsh, six goals, four assists. Strong play up top, and they're like, they're going to give Lee um, a run for their money. It's it, it, you know, I wonder what 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 Clemens is thinking. Like, man, you know, how do we all of a sudden get stuck playing Lee, Lee again? In first round yeah, matchup. the first round matchup again. You know, and, and that's a good that's a good that's a good and that's a good matchup because if you're going to prove yourself to go hard, you want to go against the best. Yeah. Um, and it's in anything. I don't know. I was podcasting down in the Rio Grande Valley, talking Valley soccer down there, but the Brownsville Hannahs down there, the La Jolla, the La Jolla Lincoln Wattises, the um, uh, who else am I missing? The Sherylands are moving into this conference. I mean, eventually we're going to bump into the Rio Grande Valley when it comes down to 6A. Oh, but yeah. It, it, if, if we can't, if we're scared to go up against some of the best of the best early on, man, you know, do we really belong in playoffs? But you know what? That's the level of play in San Antonio, Texas. But yes, going back to to um, to that to 27, it's going to be insane. Uh, I, I do not like seeing these first matchups because I love watching them all play. But I honestly think that Clemens, is, with the quality players that they got, um, yeah, they ended up um, they ended up second, uh, I believe, uh, in in their in, yes, it was second, and then New Braunfels came in third, and Steels locked in the last spot. Correct? No, no, no. Uh, Steel's in third, New Braunfels. I'm sorry, in, flip it. In, in yeah. Yes. yeah, sorry. With all these last, you know, we've been monitoring these things all day. I just get so woo, with overwhelmed with so many numbers. But yes, I, but Clemens came in, and I mean, Clemens and, and Smith Clemens and Valley, the, I, they, they were they were in second the entire the entire district, the, and all of a sudden whole, just boom, and they they caught they caught a uh, uh, 
the the Cosmos and Valley, you know, that just speaks volumes for both programs exactly. to be tied. And I think they had like four games to play, and neither one of them slipped. All four of them had had great games to to, or both teams had, had great games to, to close out the the season. And you know, there's something to say when you have that much pressure on you, and you're able to win every single game. You know, so you don't end up slipping up and get caught, um, and and lose your your district title was was great. Um, you know, so just you know, just thinking about New, uh, New Braunfels, you know, New Braunfels was led by uh, Jorge Cruz. Yeah, he had 13 Jorge. goals, three assists. Um, Gage uh, Gage Stakes had five goals, three assists. They're just a well, a really well balanced team. And the same thing with Steel. You know, Steel has a has a great goalie. Um, oh, yeah. uh, the boy from uh, from SAFC. Yeah. Um, and you know, they're still no. still's gonna be still's gonna be tough. It's gonna be interesting to see you know how uh, how Johnson handles. Handles them, so um, you know. Well, the thing Johnson's got to do is they got to understand that uh, the way they've uh, 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 systematically, they need to move the ball. They need to get um, this keeper from Steel. I cannot, I cannot believe I've known this young man since he's SAFC Academy yes. days. I just can't remember so much we're talking about. But what they need to do is they just need to be quick on the ball. They need to make those lateral moves. They need to keep him. Um, they cannot. They can They make him stand in that box. It's you're not going anywhere. Make him move uh, from pole to pole. Make him move from side to side. And then because that's going to be the biggest thing for Steel right now. And yes, they got some forward strikers that can play with the keeper. And they have a great mid that has really good true vision. They can really move the ball. But if Johnson really wants to win this game, they're going to have to really control the middle and really be aggressive with shots on goal. Yep. Yep, I agree. So with that, the 27 and the 28 in the 6A are one of the biggest ones. And obviously it's because we have, you know, we have the state champion and then we have some undefeated teams on on one and two, you know, both sides, you know, going undefeated in district. And that's impressive. I think um, out of all the conferences that I've been watching from the state of Texas, this conference is one of the toughest ones. Uh, the, respectfully, each one of those number ones um, from 5A, um, 27, 20, uh, 27, 28, 5A, and 20, uh, 27, 28, 6A, each one of those number ones undefeated straight through and through. And there's no, nothing you can say but to, to just wish them the best of luck to just really represent. Because honestly, yeah, what's, what's tough is once they get in the area, then they then start playing against the uh, Austin. Austin teams. And, and, and you know, you got the Vandergriffs and Austin Westlake. Like, Travis is back in there. Bowie. Bowie is looking insane. Uh, Wemberley's in there, I think. I believe. No, no not Wemberley. I mean, just, uh, just think about that. The second round matchup for uh, um, for the winner of the Lee Clemens game, Lake Travis. Lake Travis, yeah. Right off the bat. There's for, no and if so, the batter. For for the the winner of Reagan New Braunfels, they're they're gonna face Round Rock McNeil and Austin Bowie. Like, Either one. It's, and it, Round, it's and, crazy. and Round Rock McNeil has got some insane has got some insane players. But yeah, so that's why we're we're it's insane. It's we equally yep. match against these guys. So there is no reason um, there's no reason why San Antonio should put it to these other teams. I'll be honest with you. Uh, it's going to be they're going to put it to them. So that the, the second, you know, just just thinking about the second round, going back to you know the bracket, but just thinking about the second round for um, four districts, twenty eight and twenty seven. You know, the winners of those games when they face Austin, it, it's it's going to be those are the games to go watch. Yes, you know, absolutely. I, I mean, heck, I can only imagine the podcast. That those guys are having over there and talking about Round Rock McNeil versus Bowie, or oh, or man. talking about um, Vandergrift Van versus, versus Del Val. Oh, Del Val. The winner of that game one. plays Johnson and uh, uh, Steel. And Steel, yeah, so, correct. Right, it's, there are some headbanger games that's going to be going down in Austin, and I cannot wait Ooh. to see how San Antonio faces against those against those guys. I, that, that I like our chances. I think all of these. I think all of these schools are. Are tailor made to go up against them, but have all been tested. They've all been tested, correct? And they all. The problem is, they all have playoff experience, each and every one of them. Now, so, go ahead. Talking about you know playoff experience, we got to talk about Harlan. We got to get into let's get into it. Yeah, that's, I don't care how long this podcast runs, folks. This is this is great info. I mean, we love the soccer talk, highlighting what's going on. These are your rundowns. So Harlan, oh my goodness, Harlan should have. I'm telling you, it, it's a heartbreaker because Harlan's one of those teams that, boy, they got some quality players. Yeah, and there's 30, no reason why this team should not be a state champion. Thirty-two and zero. Yes, I mean, they, they, you know, what can you say? With the twenty and twenty and two, um, in play this year, 
16 and 0 in district play. Insane. 32 and 0, two years two years undefeated in district play. They I mean they're they're creeping up. They're trying to to take on that Lee uh that Lee legacy. The, yeah, you know, like, 3 years, 3 and a half years. Yeah. Lee and they're undefeated. Young. Uh, they're young and, and a lot of their players are I love the fact that um a lot of them are staying local. One of them just signed his, just signed today with a Olu, and I'm I'm super super excited because Olu is is ramping up for an NAIA championship run with just a local talent. Yeah, you know it's funny when you know we talk about how young they are. They are so young that their leading goal scorer is a freshman. Yes, yes. Let's talk yeah, about Gray, Graydon, Graydon Richards. Let's talk uh, he about had, he had Graydon. played two two hat. I think he had two or three hat tricks. You know it was funny. I I had posted a comment on um, uh, one of their games where I think he either had one or just or two goals. And I made a comment like, "What? No, no, great in hat trick again today." Yes, I know. Come on now, like, I'm probably, he's slipping. He's, like, he's what's going on there? He's constantly in our goals of the week when we were when people were just submitting that to us. Just because it's playoffs, trust me, it's not over. We still want all those goals of the week, all those goals that you scored because uh, we're um, plays of the week. It's just yep. insane. This kid was constantly on there, and he's only a freshman. Him, his brother, he's, you know, his brother Deuce, um, Avery Richards. You know, as a senior, you know he he had eleven goals, fifteen assists, but you know led by led by a freshman, a led freshman, by a freshman. You know, thirteen goals, three assists. Um, Oscar Valencia, you know what? Goals. Oscar Valencia is another one of my favorite local players. Yeah, he kid is so good. I remember last year, um, I believe it was yeah, it was Oscar Valencia. We were able to put him in a Sports Center uh, top ten with that nasty goal he had against Brownsville Hannah. Uh, last year, literally from half court, just mooshed it right in there. We saw it. I, we had a contact over in Sports Center, and I said, "Dude, you got to watch this." And he put him at number three. So yeah, yeah that was a beautiful. That well, guy can play. You know what can you say about the the Oliveras family? You know, you got Josh Oliveras, Tomas, Jacob, the Oliveras all, family. All those kids continue to to just ball out with uh, with Harlan, and then um, led by Devin Hamill. I know he he committed to. Uh, I believe Dallas Baptist. They're going to DBU. To DBU, yeah. um, you know, so they've got a great, so, a great team. But they are led by their junior goalie Dominic Pena. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. Dom Without is Don. an absolute beast. Um, the, the kid just makes monster save after monster save. Great kid, you know, great family. Nothing but respect for them. I'm, I'm so happy for you know everything he does. I. I can't wait to see what kind of run Harlan Harlan goes on. Yeah, this year. well, first round they got twenty fifth of March. They'll be playing against. Uh, they're playing down actually in Corpus Christi. Uh, they'll be facing on a very tough Laredo Nixon, who has had a very incredible year as well. One of those stories um, that just they had a win to get in and they did. And so now, un- unfortunately for them, uh, they are going to be going against the Harlan Ox and here in San Antonio, and it's going to be. It's going to be a good fun. It's going to be a good time down there in Corpus Christi. We're going to try to make our way down that way. Yep. Yep. And so, you know, so you know, looking at the district, you had Harlan coming coming undefeated. Correct. Um, O'Connor, who who made, to me, O'Connor was one of, I didn't see, in watching, O'Connor? Some, yeah. watching some of their preseason Agreed. games, I didn't think that they would, that they would do as, as well as they did. I knew they'd make playoffs, but finishing second, going 12-2-2, um, in district play was was strong. That was and, huge. And then they beat Reagan at the end of the year um, in the in a non district you know, yeah, kind, of, kind yeah. of you know uh, tune up for for the playoffs. They looked good. Um, Marshall Kemp coming in third. Then they're also playing uh, in Corpus Christi against Laredo Alexander. So they got that that got they got that match. And then and then Brennan, you know, you hate to say say a team snuck in, but Brennan snuck in. Yeah. You know, on that that final day that where final game, you know, they, they needed to win. They lost. They lost that last game. Um, and if, if Stevens had, had won, Stevens would have would have came in that fourth spot. Yeah. But Coach Boss, um, you know what can you say about you know about her female coach at, at Stevens just yes. doing great things, amazing. They're, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to see what she does to that program. But Brendan coming in, you know, in that fourth place, Snuck in and I'm happy loss. for them. Yeah. They, you know, they they stuck with it all year, um, and you know I think they're going to do do good things in the coming future. Their first round matchup, I think, is going to be you know will end up being too tough for them. Um, you know, but, but looking at this district, the, yeah, the Golden Boot winner coming out of Marshall, in uh, in Riley Hawes, Riley a Hawes, senior, yeah. good you know, kid, twenty nine goals. He also led the district in assists. So you know, twenty nine goals, twenty assists, coming in seventy eight points, just just smashing that district. But it, it's one thing for one player to do it; 
his teammate, Efren Duarte, Duarte. Com- yeah. 20, 25 goals, 14 assists. That duo, man, I'm, I'm, Lethal. Looking, I'm Lethal. looking forward to seeing Lethal. what you know what they what they do in their first round matchup. It's that's gonna be a good one. You know, I think I think Marshall can can sneak up on um, you know sneak up on somebody and, and you know and win that that first uh, that first game. O'Connor had had you know. Just a, a, a great, you know, great run. They had a great run. They had yeah. a great run. Uh, I honestly believe, um, I don't want to say O'Connor went untested, but I think they did the job. They got the job done. They had the yeah, same they challenges. Beat, they beat who they needed to beat. They, they beat they who beat. they needed to beat. They they're, took they're the, strong. They took, yeah, they're a strong team. Yep. You know, they were, they were led by uh, Mario Gall- uh, Galliano, I, I believe. Galliano. Him. But it's, uh, you know, he 11 goals, 6 assists. Mario's one of those players that he'll just sneak up on you and he, he's a, what I like about Mario and the way his style of play is he stays low to the ground and he's super aggressive. He goes forward fearless. He's going to take that shot and he has he won't think about it. If the opportunity pops up, Mario's taking it. Yeah. And then uh, Josiah, Josiah, Josiah finishing with uh, ten goals, two assists. So they they've got some 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 scores on that O'Connor team. They're going they're going to be fun to watch um, in their first game. But man, just just thinking about Marshall. You know, Marshall had some just ballers with uh with Riley and Ephraim. Yeah. Um so they did. It, they're gonna be they're gonna be a tough a tough out so but well, you know what I mean there's so much talent I mean we, we there's so much talent just at twenty seven and wow I mean it, we we spent a good amount of time just talking about uh these teams. Wow um and we haven't talked about twenty five. We haven't even spoken the, about twenty five girls the girls, but we we're definitely gonna be. I think we're gonna have to like do a second podcast, second half for that. But I'll be honest with you, folks. Um, do not miss out on these on these matches. Each one of these players that we've been highlighting. This is basically your rundown. This is what you need to know as to why and who and what they're re- why are they even there. These players have really played their hearts out, and our and our friends over at Six A have done an, an amazing job. Um, just by just. Just working and trying to find the stats, the true stats of each of these players. Again, we are yeah. working super hard. Go there's, ahead. There's nothing. There's nothing biased about you know about what we do. You know, all all we're trying to do is get the stats out there, the scores up, the scores out there, but also promote and highlight all these players. You know, and that's that for me. You know, this rundown. You know, how much time we just spent right now. You know, and just talking about about these boys and these, and these athletes uh, is kind of what what we're all about. All we want to do is promote each one of these student athletes. And just have them have a, a voice, an outlet for the hard work that they put in, um, you know, outside of the game. And when it comes to the game and them showing up, let's give them an outlet to be able to promote themselves and be proud of what they do. And show, you know, for the for the city to see. And, and who knows, hopefully one coach sees it. And that's their, their way to, to start a conversation with the coach that may have never even heard of them. And that's the beauty and of the game. What, and that's, that's the what, purpose that's of this all whole about. thing. That's the whole part. And I agree 100% with you. That is the purpose of all of this. Now, folks, I understand that there's a lot of soccer talk to talk about. We're going to definitely be working on a, se- on a second episode of, of the Soccer Talk Rundown. I love the fact you guys enjoy these. Keep sending us your, uh, met- your questions, any highlighting videos, and um, anything you might have for us. We're going to be definitely going to be touching on the 5A aspect of it here real soon. So do not feel left out. We're definitely going to be hitting that. Here real soon for you. For the Soy San Antonio football soccer talk, we have 6A Soccer. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I appreciate appreciate you having me on. Appreciate your support. Um, you know, just appreciate all, all the, the players, the parents, um, the coaches uh, for allowing me to, you know, to help try to publicize, you know, these great programs. But, you know, but publicize, you know, and promote these kids. Um, looking forward to, to taking them to the clubs. I've got some great clubs out here. Um, and, and it's not just the ECNLs, but it's, you know, the BVBs, the SA correct, Cities, correct. San Antonio yeah. Surf, um, oh, yeah. Juventus. There are some great, great clubs out here. Um, and I'm, I want to, pr- you know, promote every single one of them um, and, you know, promote their, their players. And, you know, let's, let's continue to get those, those goals of the week and saves of the week. Um, you know, send me, tag me in, in your, uh, your final scores. And let's you know, let's get it out there. Let's get let's keep the, the the fire going with with these kids. And you know, I love it. I love to see the motivation um, with the with the players. It keeps me motivated and keeps me wanting to, to keep this going and and uh, help it grow. 
Well, it's an outstanding job that you're doing over there on that side of the house. We greatly appreciate it. You know, the more of uh, the more of these uh, platforms that pop up, the more opportunities for us to talk uh, players, uh, highlight features, goals, more journalism, more Soy San Antonio football, more 6A soccer in San Antonio. For this episode, you have Benjamin Dosa, Soy San Antonio football. This is your 6A San Antonio soccer rundown, joined by our friends over at 6 Soccer. <laughs> 